Oh, that's a way. Fucking hell, it's my end, mate. <laughs> Well, good morning. You've joined us down at the amazing Suffolk Water Park on a beautiful, gorgeous late winter's day. So it's the uh, back end of February. I've not been back in carp fishing mode for a while because I've been diversifying into a bit of other species territory. So I've got my carp head back on now and isn't it lovely to be back out doing it. So we've, we've just got here this morning, We're just doing a day session and we've managed to get a bite quite quickly so we've probably had the rod out for about an hour so far and this guy's really giving a good account of himself really pulling around and it's the first bite of the day might be the only bite of the day but we've caught a carp and oh <laughs> see i might curse myself there we've hopefully caught a carp let's not uh, count it until it's in the net but we've certainly got a bite which we came here to do and i'll show you guys what i've been doing and we talk a bit about spring fishing and what you can expect, what you should be thinking about, what you should be doing. And in the meantime, well, we've seen the fish. It's an amazing looking heavily scaled mirror. And he's leading me a right dance up and down this marginal shelf. I've fished here a few times in the past and these fish really, really do fight well. You see some big boils coming up there. And that fish is good six foot down at that point. So he's causing a fair bit of turbulence. I don't think he's massive but cool it's just so nice you know i've been like uh, say i haven't done much carp fishing for a couple of months i haven't done any and to come out and be playing one on my first trip back out is a real tonic come on mate yes thank you very much carp at any time is very very welcome but when you're coming out of a long old winter you've got the whole season ahead of you it's a magical moment that Well, a more immaculate, beautiful, golden coloured example of a mirror carp would be hard to find. Looking even more resplendent on this late winter's day. Armour scales, big wide back, full of colour and attitude. What a fantastic way to start the day and to welcome me back into carp fishing for 2022 after a little break. So, might be the only one we get today, but if it is, I'm not going to grumble. Well, what better start to a day session could we have asked for than that? And what better a return to carp fishing after a, a two month layoff could I have asked for? I mean, to catch one was, you know, not at all order, let's be honest, it is a well-stocked lake, but it is still February and the fishing everywhere is patchy. But to get a fish and to get one that looked like that with those big golden armor plates, you know, a good sized mirror carp in immaculate condition, yeah, that's, that's a proper buzz. So just made myself a nice strong coffee, sit down and reflect on the action. I was thinking, you know, if we could catch one carp today, then we've had a result. So we've achieved that now and we've still got six five or six hours probably of fishing to play with so we may be able to nick another one i want to show you what i'm doing in terms of bait and rigs as we go through the day but a little bit about the lake as i said we're down at the suffolk water park we're on a lake called the trad lake or the traditional lake it's probably about three or four acres i suppose with i think that they reckon about 150 carp Probably, and again, I'm guessing maybe 100 of those will be doubles and maybe 50 of them or so will be 20s up to, I think about 27 or 28 pounds. So uh, a fantastic option for, for a lake where you wanna get a few bites, learn how to ply your carp fishing trade, 
Also, if you're like me, you want to come out um, away from your harder lakes for a day and, um, and just have a go at some uh, sometimes obl quite obliging and beautiful looking carp. So I fished it a fair few times with clients over the last year or two. I say I fish, I haven't actually fished it. Um, this is the first time I've fished it, I think, properly myself, other than maybe the odd bit of filming. But um, it's been kind to my clients and I brought my son River here for his first ever night last summer and he had quite a lot of fish, up to 23 pounds. So there's some really, really nice fish in here, mirrors and commons, and a couple of ghosties and, and so on. And um, I like it. It's, it's, uh, everywhere looks a bit raw at the moment, you know, because it's, it's just coming out of winter, everything's bare, but it is a pretty little lake. The fish are lovely. And you know what, going into a day where we've got several hours of fishing ahead of us, I've got a nice hot cup of coffee, and I'm thinking, life don't get much better than this. So the rig that I'm using today is a rig that I've used for years and years. It serves me really, really well. It's anti-tangle. It's quite hard for the fish to deal with. And it's based around 20 pound contact fluorocarbon, which I've tied using a whipping knot to the eye of the hook. Now, that is absolutely key. If you tie it with uh, the commonly used knotless knot, then this exit point, you can see here, that's a straight eyed hook, but look how the fluorocarbon exits almost in a straight line. Now, if that was tied with a knotless knot, it would be kicking in like that, wouldn't it? And you just don't have any gap between the point and the uh, fluorocarbon to, to prick the fish. So after tying that with a, a whipping knot, I've cut the tag end off and then I've attached a micro ring swivel to the shank of the hook and then a hook bead just above it to stop it sliding and obviously coming off around the bend of the hook. And at the other end, the hook link terminates in a figure of eight loop knot and a ring swivel. Now the loop knot's very, very important because that really means that whichever direction the fish comes from, the rig is accessible. It gives it complete movement, 360, so that the fish can pick it up whichever way it comes. And that really is one of the key secrets um, and most important facets of a successful stiff rig is, although it is stiff, it can be picked up from anywhere rather than just laying fixed and rigid. You definitely don't want that. You need points of movement. The other point of movement is obviously the separation between the hook bait and the hook, which is achieved by that micro ring swivel. I've got a little dot of tungsten putty halfway along. The overall length of the rig is about seven inches and it's nice and compact, doesn't tangle and tends to work very, very well. So the hook bait itself is Probably some of you might be watching this thinking, Pennin's using yellow. He always says, don't do that. Well, we're fishing a lake here where there are a lot of double figure fish, some single figure fish. And it's certainly true that smaller fish do get turned on visually rather than the, the more olfactory senses that are used by the bigger, older fish. So if I was fishing in my own fishing situation for big fish, you know, like campaign style, I probably wouldn't be using something like this, but fishing for competitive feeding, younger, agile, visual feeding carp, a little tip of yellow can be a very good idea, especially early in the season as we've got now. So all I've got here is a 12 mil Manila bottom bait. So I'm using the active Manila and I've just cut the top off that with a craft knife and attached probably about a third again of a, a yellow manila pop-up on top there. So because that is a pop-up, it sits on the bottom like that. You've just got a bit of buoyancy, hardly anything at all. So the bait will sit next to the hook and give off a little bit extra visual and scented attraction. Now, over the top of that, I'm keeping everything very, very simple. I'm just feeding 12 mil active manila, or manila active, which is covered in this really nice paste wrap which means that on the bottom, it slowly dissolves, letting off all of those attractors. 
So that's it, a few handfuls of 12 mil Manila and a rig over the top. I have got one rod out which has just got a brown bait on which is what I would normally tend to do, the same as all the others, but on one rod I've got a little fleck of yellow to see if it, uh, to see if it makes any difference. So we've got the day ahead of us, let's see if we can get uh, a response and um, that's what I'll be using on both rods. <laughs> Well, I was just round there with the Polaroids getting underneath the trees and the overhangs, seeing what was going on. Seen a couple of fish roll over there in the last half an hour and had a couple of liners, little knocks on this rod and all of a sudden it just looked prime for a bite. With those fish rolling and that, sort of after two or three hours or even three or four hours of very quiet, uh, nothing going on, suddenly that, a little flurry. And I said, I said to my man Damon, who's the camera wizard, I said, Damon, it's gonna go. It looks really good. And within five minutes of saying that, the rod's gone. So we've got a lively comment on the end and I've seen him roll, he's a lovely colour. Really lovely. I tried to get in those reeds, but I managed to get him out. There he is, he's coming up now. Really nice little comment. I love the fight. I've always loved the fight of a carp. Or any fish, you know, when you, you've got something angry and wild pulling on the end of the, the line, it's, it's such an exhilarating experience. Those big boils coming up. Because, here it goes. Not a bad one. Oh, it's still not, it's still not finished. Here we go. Fantastic. Two in a day. We're very, very happy about that. Fantastic. And still got a couple of hours to go. So I'm going to get this fish unhooked as quickly as possible, get the rig back in the game, and then we'll have a look at the fish. Okay, so one really important element of carp fishing is maximising your potential. So one spot's done 100% of the bites. I've got two rods, each one capable of 50% return. Think of it like that. So at the moment, both of my carp have been caught on 50% of my ability. So I'm moving both rods across to that far margin, see if I can maximise my chances, hopefully winkle out. There's a chance of another fish, you never know. Three in a day would be mega for the cameras because it's never as easy once the cameras are rolling, believe me. So I'm gonna move two rods over there. I'm gonna walk around putting a little bit more bait. Fingers crossed we can get one before it gets dark. Maybe even an elusive scaly 20 pounder. Oh, that's a fish. Is it? Yeah. Literally went in my hand. Well, <laughs> how interesting. I was just uh, finishing off presenting that right hand rod on the zone and uh, just setting the line and getting the bobbin sorted and the left hand rod bleeps. I thought I'd knocked it <laughs> and the bobbin smashed into the rod literally while I was kneeling next to it and there's a fish on. So this has only been recast a few, couple of minutes. And uh, the only problem we've got now is that we've got a common in the net about 18 pounds and we've got a fish on the end of this. And I normally have two nets, but with it being the end of February, I, <laughs> I didn't bother. So what I'll probably do is let that guy swim out the net and we'll net the new guy. Oh, he's caught around that line. What's going on there? Damn. Well, there you go. That's me being distracted, trying to let that other carp go. And this is uh, 
knitted my lines together. Not good. Let's see if we can get him in the net. And there we go. There we go. Excellent. Well, that was a bit of a frenetic activity for the last part of the day. It's about 3 p.m. We've probably got two, two hours or so of fishable light left, maybe a bit more. Let's get those rods back over there and see if we can nick another one without being too greedy. Well, that is the result of maximizing your opportunities. So, the rod that I put across to join the other one, I've literally just got back. I've just walked around, thrown in some bait, come back, and it's off. Let's see if he's coming over the top of that line or is he gonna hit it? Uh, come on, come this side. It's like they can smell where your other line is. <laughs> and just walk back into the swim. Only like trotted around there and whack, it's away. And we've got another fish. We've still got one in the net. <laughs> I'm not gonna let this one go as well. We're just, we're just gonna get two fish and I'll make sure I own one of them and let them go out the, out the net. But I need to set up a second net, really. So we've gone through a, we had that fish quick this morning and then we've gone through a bit of a slow part of the day and then bang, three bites in an hour, I guess. And still plenty of daylight to go out. The sun's still nice and high. Winter carp fishing. Can call it winter, yeah, still February. We can call this winter carp fishing. Fantastic. Interesting thing is, this fish must have been down there feeding whilst I was dropping in bait over his head. So I dropped in a few baits, ran back round there, and off it went. So they're obviously very turned on now. Look at that fully scaled core. What a film star. Come on, mate. Here we go. Hey. <laughs> you know what? Catching carp at any time of the year is mega. When you catch them when the water's still freezing cold, it feels like they're worth two or three of their summer counterparts. You know, proper hard earned, but even more of a buzz as well. That's mega. Oh, that's away. You know, it's mayhem, mate. Well, the area certainly seems to be rocking now. Um, something that I have found with using the active baits, we did this last summer with the, with the krill active, and the more you put in, the better it gets because you get that residue of all the broken down powders, all the paste that's dissolved into the water column. So if you keep putting it in little and often and you've got fish activity, the spots do usually reach a crescendo, which fish number five or bite number five in, in a short day session, it's um, certainly proving it's worth. With two fish in this net, that's at full capacity. So I'm gonna let those go probably in a minute and I've got an extra net out of the van and hopefully this guy is gonna go in there in just a minute. Wow. Mayhem. So the decision to move two rods onto the spot has obviously been vindicated, maximising our chances. There's three carp in nets at once. If this guy goes in on a chilly early spring day, that's more than I could have asked for. So I'm absolutely buzzing. Here we go. Now that is absolutely brilliant. 
up to my ears in carp. <laughs> Who would have thought it? And he's another lovely, lovely looking common. <sighs> Better sort this mess out. So, the first two fish uh, of the flurry are in this net. We've got a mirror about 18 pound and a fully scaled are probably about 12 or 13 pound. They're both in the net together, so I don't want to lift the net out because they could damage each other. So I'm just going to drop the draw cord, we'll send them on their way, and then we'll have a look at the other guy. Well, what an incredible day. We've enjoyed five amazing carp from the Trad Lake at Suffolk Water Park. And this guy is probably the last of the flurry, but another beautiful mid to upper double, hard fighting common carp. Yeah, a day that I'll remember for a long time. The sun's just setting over there. We might have time for another one, but I don't really mind too much. I'll be home in time for dinner. And yeah, a memorable day. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching. Take note from the tips, you know, there's little bits in there that hopefully you can take and apply to your own fishing. Get out there and do it. The best time of the year is right upon us now. Well, there's only 20 minutes or so to go until the gate shuts and I'm in the process of packing everything up. Well, I'll sling it back over there anyway, like you do. Walked around, threw some bait in, ran back round. Just came into the swim and bang, one of the rods is off again. So, fish are now responding when I'm throwing bait in on their heads, clearly, because that fish must have been down there when A, when the lead went in, and B, when the bait went in. So, it feels like it might be a slightly better fish. So, either way, I'm sure it'll be a stunner. And as the rod bends against that sunset, I can't imagine a better day's fishing. Six bites, happy days. Come on, there he is. Excellent. <laughs> this way, my friend. <laughs> 